Look at my guy Chip. Look at my guy Chip. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up, everyone, man? You already know what time it is. It's Wednesday. It's 10 a.m. It's 10 or two, whatever. But it's the Devo and Chris Joe show. And Joe, it's uh, it's the last show of the season, man. I hope not, but it, you know, apparently, you know, it, it, it is, man. You know, so you know how I get. It gets emotional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, we'll we'll be back. You know, I got I got my guy Chip with me. You know, for the last show, and he wanted to rock out, man. So we gonna let him. We're gonna let him rock out. But man, the last show, I think, I guess, Joe, we saved it. Well, damn. All right, you you want to leave that? So now he got up. But uh, we saved. I guess we saved the best for last, man. We got we got a yep. a great guest on. Uh, for the show today, head coach Adrian. Yeah, we yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and we can call him. We can call him Red. You guys in the chat, you can't call him Red. We can, you can just you got to call him Coach Archery. All right, but we're on a different level. We're on a different level with him, man. But before before we um we introduce Red, I just want to say thanks again to our sponsor, uh, Flintstone. Mike Mike Flynn, man, you've been um, supportive for us throughout the whole season. Um, yeah. And you definitely, uh, we're definitely appreciative of you. And again, man, look, you you know where that Flintstone is. You know the the door with the two big leaves on it when you open it up, and it's like, ah, You're right. <laughs> Get that aroma. Shout out. That's a fact. Shout out Mike and uh, and, and Flintstone, man, for holding it down. But um, man, Joe, we, we got a great show. We're gonna um, we're gonna get into it, man, with, with Coach Red. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, uh, good questions, a lot of conversations. So let's hop on with, uh, with our guy, Red, man. Yo, Red. yo. What's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. Red, what's How up, you guys man? doing today? I'm good, <laughs> nah, you, no, look. I got to switch it up, man. You know? Nah. Red, you, you must, I, I know you heard the show before. You, man, we cursing, we doing all type of shit. So you, it, you don't got to say none of that. Yeah, love the show. My <laughs> guy, lock guy. in. Love the show. <laughs> Authentic. Red, we appreciate you, you coming be. on, man. I, I know you are uh, busy with everything going on, man. With the, it's just in this new landscape of college basketball with the portal and the Ooh. NIL. It's I already know it, it, it's it's uh, it's busy as shit. But I, I want to ask you first. I want to jump it off, man. I guess before, you know, right when you got the job, it, 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 you obviously had an idea in your head of, uh, you know, how it was going to be and the work that you had to, you know, put in towards it. But now having, you know, been through your first year and, and gone through the ups and downs and, um, you know, dealing with all the stuff that you had to deal with, was it kind of the same idea that you had in your head before or or did things change of, you know, how you thought it would have went and how you, you know, how it, how it did go? You know, the one thing is, um, you know, you have an idea of what you think it's going to be, and it's never that. You know, you you know, I hear coaches always say that, and you know how you talk to you guys always talk to coaches, and you know, Chris, you know, you're doing it now. Like it, it's it's literally every day you're pivoting, adjusting, moving. Um, I didn't realize that. You know, in the role that I had, coach did a you know, um, you know, he was a master at it. But um, it was it was good. I thought um, my vision. I thought we had a chance to execute some of it. Obviously, the, the results um, were not what I wanted it to be. I would like to be playing right now. But I was excited um, going through the season, um, taking the challenges. I thought, you know, um, to be able to kind of step out from under coaches' shadows and kind of put my imprint on it and how I want to play and how I see it and how I want the program to be run. I thought everybody that followed us got a glimpse of that, whether it was sometimes good or sometimes bad. You know, I think – I think everyone got a glimpse of, you know, what I want my program to be, what I want this program to, to, to look like, and, and how we want to play and how we want to conduct ourselves and things like that. So uh, overall, you know, it's always hard to kind of evaluate because the season's still not over. Like you said, E, like I'm – the season's not over, you know. I'm like I'm still trying to, you know, uh, navigate, you know, really the first year transfer border with departure, you know, trying to improve. Uh, you know, working on all different other things. So, but I thought overall, you know, from a basketball standpoint, I thought, you know, we took a step in the right direction. So my quick question, you know, a little quick hitter was, you know, just to piggyback off of just the season starting, you coming in and wanting your imprint on, on, on the team. How was it? And you probably answered this a million times before, but I never heard going from zone, 
you know, to now introducing man to man principles and rotations and things of that nature, where a lot of the guys who were there had played man in their life, but haven't played man, I guess, up until the point where you started coaching. How was that transition? It was it was scary. <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. You know, um, obviously, obviously teaching it, and uh, you know, and the guys that we had, they had a, you know, these guys were competitive. They had a lot of bravado, um, you know. But uh, as you know, coaching man to man, you know, man to man is not just me guarding your man. You know, the principles and things like that. It took some time, and and we were still a work in progress all throughout the year, um, and so. Uh, but it was fun and exciting to, to to see. We got better. We got better. We got better. Probably much, almost each game, each week. And then I thought in you know, the month of February was where we really kind of hit that wall um, due to fatigue, the, the longevity of the mm-hmm. season, and the effort mm-hmm. you, know, you got to put in to be a good man in that team. And obviously yeah. we were undersized. And we had to deal with some stuff. So I thought that kind of, you know, our February um, numbers in defense were not good at all. And I thought – um our offense got better, and that's why we were able to win some games. But overall, it was fun, but it, it was it was scary, you know, just really teaching it um, and those guys, getting those guys to understand, you know, what man-to-man really is. You know, it's not just mm-hmm. your man. You got to help. You got to be able to close out, you know, the proper stance. Exactly. stance, stance. And then finishing plays, rebounding. And I thought those are the things that we, you know, the rebounding part was the one thing that we, we didn't do a really good job of. And, you know, obviously those are the things that we need to work on. But overall, it was fun. It was exciting. It was challenging. Yeah. Red, I, I think I don't really think people like understand, like, because you, obviously you, you coming from an associate head coach to a head coach, totally different role because not only are you coaching, but like you're now you're the CEO of a, of, of a whole program. You know what I mean? So it's not just basketball that comes into play. It's now you got to deal with the boosters and the, and, and the NIL and, you know, uh, the professors and, and, and all that. So, like, how, how is that for you, man, really kind of, I guess, settling into that role and, and, like, dealing with all those new stuff, having to, having to go up and, and talk to the presser, you know, even when you, when you lose a game, you don't want to go and immediately talk about <laughs> shit like that. So, like, right, right, I see, right. I see I just, my I, man riding by his tongue a few times, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot more to it. <laughs> it, it. It's a lot more to it when you're the head coach because now, now like, you're the CEO, so now you're taking calls. Motherfuckers calling you from, like, like, damn, who the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? You got yeah. all type of shit that you got to deal with. So I know your stress level was probably here at associate head coach, and then that shit went to fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right here dealing Dang. with all that shit. Not even close. No, you, you know, it's, it's, you know, I tell you, you know, um, you know, being a head coach, obviously, you know, you got the coaching part, but like you said, right after the game, you know, and after the game, obviously, you know, it's emotional. Basketball is emotional and things happen. Um, now, you know, you're trying to, you know, especially during the season, you're trying to uh, get your point across, but get prepared for the next game. And that starts literally like, Right. You know, maybe right. ten minutes after the game. So now you got to think about what you're going to, how you're going to talk to your team. And now, as you're walking to the press conference, you're still mad. You know, we all competitive, and you just, you know, now you got to be able to answer these questions. And, and and obviously, your messaging has to be right, just because of the landscape that we live in today. But you want to be authentic, mm-hmm. you know. And I thought, you know, you, you you know, people want authenticity, you know. And again, sometimes you got to be very careful of that, um, of how you have a message across because this is people to forget, man. Like this is a, you know, you going in right after a game. It's emotional. You know, you're, right. you're upset. Yeah. All you have to, sometimes you say stuff that you're like, Oh man, he jumped off the roof with that one. Like, geez. you know, you got, you got a whole season left. So, you know, being able to, to control those emotions, but everything is always getting ready and prepared for the next step. And I think that's the, that's the challenge. I think for, for, for me, e, that was, that was really new. Um, even coming in in the day, like you said, like getting my day together, you know, start my day earlier because I got to be able to organize and be organized and be able to, you know, um, you know, it's just not just showing up, like you said, e, on the court, like, you know, you got these different components that, you know, I wasn't you know aware of, you know, as much as, as much, as much time you got to spend with that as you got to spend with your team and getting them organized and, and trying to strategize and getting those, getting, getting your guys ready. But it's other parts of the program, you know, like you said, the messaging, you know, the community stuff, Uh, you know, recruiting, recruiting never stops. You know, you're coaching in in this season, but you're recruiting for next season, you know, which are high. So it's just constant, 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 um, you know, uh, preparation and organization and always kind of staying present and not getting too ahead of yourself. I think that's the biggest challenge. So I think 
you know, you answered that phenomenally. First of all, yeah, that was PR, like <laughs> PR is up top notch, but um, so <laughs> as the season is going, right. You know, every team, like you mentioned, you, you plan a certain way and things happen. There's injuries, there's different factors that come about. Um, at what point of the season did you think like, what was the, I guess the, the turning point? Was it, was it big fella getting hurt where it kind of changed? Now you got your lineup has to switch up a bit. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned being undersized, obviously him standing at seven, whatever he was, was great for us inside presence, rebounding, shot uh, changing ability and things of that nature. Do you think that was the start of where it's like, shit, now we got to go back to the drawing board and figure things out. You got to figure pieces. Now we got Malik. We got to start figuring things out. Was that the first blow or if that's what you would call it to the season? Right. No, you know what? Um, I I thought when Naheem went out, that didn't, you know, obviously it was a challenge, but, you know, we already had, um, you know, people, I don't know if people realize we were already, already, bringing Malik in um, at that mm-hmm. at his position. Um, but I thought, um, to be honest with you, I thought after the Wake Forest game, um, obviously some unfortunate incidents happened. I thought, you know, once our numbers got a little bit smaller, um, I thought our team really kind of band together because it was, again, we were playing eight and nine guys up until then. I thought people were starting yeah, to settle exactly. in um, into that, and then we had to kind of readjust. But I thought, you know, after – after uh, you know, our numbers got a little bit smaller. I thought uh, d- these guys really kind of locked in. I mean, shit, you, you talk 20, 20 wins in in your first year. You know what I'm saying? Double digit wins in the ACC. And and mind you, the NCAA fucked up with with the selection committee and all that. Because t- what the ACC right now in, in the tournament is like I don't know what nine and one or eight yeah. and one or whatever it is. Because it really yeah. it was the ACC was beating up on each other the whole in the in conference. Right. So that's what. Yeah. People didn't really see. I mean, it's, it's it's one of the best conferences uh, in the country, hands down. So, go, kind of going back to Joe, what Joe was just saying, you know, Naheem gets hurt. We, you know, you, we have the Benny situation. Uh, you have situations where you know Justin Taylor is, is, might be out of position. Malik Brown might be out of position. So, so those guys are kind of thrust into a into a role maybe they haven't ever been in before. You know what I'm saying? And then still right. be able to have the success that you guys have. How, how like as a coaching staff? Like, did you guys navigate, the, you know, those type of situations? Like, are, you know, being able to put Malik at the five when he might, you know, really be a four or putting Justin at the four when he's really like a, a, a two, three. Like, what were those conversations like, you know, in, in, in the meetings, like dealing with that type of stuff? You know, I think coaches are always, you know, we were always trying to figure out how do we get a, um, you know, an advantage at some point. And, and at putting Malik at the five, I thought that was a, uh, that was a, uh, Something that uh, I learned from Coach, <clears throat> Coach Bayhop. You know, um, people. You know, we we played when we made that Final Four run. Todd Lotta played the five for us, and he you know yeah, he right. really was a four three. So you know, we kind of you know I had some experiences pulling from that, and obviously a lot of it was Malik's. Uh, I thought that's where he had the biggest advantage at, um, based on where his game was at at the time. Um, being able to, you know, really on a defensive end impact and give us that plug. And then on the offensive end, he's such a great passer and he was quick. So, you know, we were just thinking of how can we get advantage to help everyone else? Um, and I thought Malik was the one, he was the key to everything. You know, he really was. It was kind of like when we had Marek Dolaja. He was the key. He was the unsung hero. Yeah. He made everything happen from both ends of the floor. Um, I thought that was the thing that, you know, we had to do. And um, we, we, we bounced around all types of ideas, you know, even think about, hey, let, maybe we bring Will Patterson, you know, and, and things like that. But I just thought Malik gave us the best advantage um, to be competitive. And then obviously Justin, I thought Justin um, being able to try to get Chris and Justin on from the floor at the same time because people didn't realize, you know, I mean, people, you know, Justin came in the season shooting, you know, from off of last and he was shooting, you know, 36, some 36% from three point range. So it was a way to try to like, Hey, how can we get both of our best shooters on the court at the time? So it was just a lot yeah. of talking back and forth. Justin, you know, being six, six and strong, um, obviously, um, being, and, he, and he's such a, you know, a battler and a competitor, you know, I thought he would step up to the challenge and he did. And we talked about it. To him, Emily, you know those guys. They do. They're all about the right things. They're all about winning and all about the team. And you know they stepped up to the challenge. Coming, excuse me, coming into the season. Obviously, the one of the the, the brightest spots was JJ coming in and and everybody being excited about that duo, uh, JJ and Judah. Um, 
You know, I think it, it, it and we saw some great flashes. You know what I'm saying? I think it started off, you know, the guys just trying to figure out how to play with one another out there on the floor. Um, how was that for you? Just for getting everybody to buy in. I don't know what the conversations are like, but just getting the whole team to buy in where JJ is obviously coming in, starting. He, he needs to be a key contributor for the team to be successful. Um, how was the buy-in of the group? How, like, what kind of group was it? Was it uh, a group that was easily, they, they bought it easily to whatever it was that you were, that you were selling or, or did it take them a while to gel and all those things? I mean, I think we had our bumps and bruises like anything, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest thing is that, um, you know, I was talking to Judah, um, when he was, um, in the, in the draft process and, uh, Talk to JJ and uh, when JJ came and I remember talking to Judah and Judah was excited, you know, okay. like he was excited to have JJ um, to play with. And, um, and obviously, you know, JJ was excited to come back home and play, you know, yep. uh, with, with Judah, you know, again. Um, so the buy-in was there. I think um, it was really just the, the, the natural, you know how it is guys like, you know, it That's takes energy. time, and like everybody kind of has their way of playing. Now you're trying to gel it, you're trying to play together and be respectful. And I mm-hmm. think they both, you know, were mindful of each other's game. And uh, I thought eventually when we hit our win streak and we really started playing well, I thought um, that's when the team kind of, I thought everyone kind of settled in. And uh, they knew how to play off of each other. And it takes time. People think it just happens over there. Just because you have talent yeah, no. and you see it all the time. It takes time. You guys have been on talented. Chris, I remember when I first got here, you know, um, the team that we had, man, it was loaded. You know, the team was <laughs> loaded. And, you know, but we were so talented. We were able to beat teams and we wasn't playing our best. You know, exactly. but then we started that was, playing yeah, our facts. Best. You know, when we started playing our best, you know, we knew Chris, we knew how many shots here. We had to get you the ball. We knew like, and that takes, that thing's happened. But, <laughs> but the, the buy-in it, every day though. You know, like uh, as a coach, you got to preach that every day. And, you know, and I actually, you know, pull from that experience, Joe, like with this team, because, you know, when we walked yeah. in this, you know, I think, Eric, you remember when you walked in earlier, it was like, man, we haven't had this much, you know, talent, you know, one through 11 and 12 in a long time. You know, and I was like, the last time I remember it was when I walked in, yo, Joe, your senior year, man. Like it yeah. was, yeah. It, you know, so it was competitive. It was talent, you know, it was <laughs> And the biggest thing that I thought we did was we brought in guys that had to that had to prove something. They had a chip on their shoulder. You know, Kyle Cuff came from Kansas. He didn't play. Mm-hmm. You know, Chance Westry coming from Auburn. Obviously, he played a little bit, but got hurt. But he didn't play. Yeah. You know, yeah. Cardia Copeland at the time. You know, he didn't play as much as he wanted to that year, um, the first year. So you know, he 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 you know he came in trying to play. You know, everyone had some type of chip. You know, J.J. didn't have the freshman year that he wanted to have. So I thought mm-hmm. it was, you know, the biggest thing was doing that every day. Like talking about how good we are as a team every day. You know, what we did together as a team, what we emphasized, what we talked. Our language had to be about being together. Um, because if mm-hmm. not, you know, you know how it is. When you go home, you got your people. And they all yeah. team yeah. even though team, 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 whatever. <laughs> yeah, so no when doubt. You, back, <laughs> you know, when you come Practice the next day, you know, you got to be able to kind of offset that. that. So, yeah, again, yeah. I thought, but I thought we had guys that had the pedi- the, uh, the mindset, and they all had something to prove. They all had something to prove, including myself and our staff. So I thought it was really a, a good mixture. We were already heading in the right, the right direction, but it was really just the everyday reminding them. Man, it, it, Red, you kind of <laughs> – it's funny you said that because, like, you said, everybody has their crew. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go back home, man, you should have got fucking 10 more shots. You should have got the ball mm-hmm. more. You said, so, and, and then, like, with the landscape in college basketball, how it is now <laughs> with, 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 with the NIL. Keep it real, man. Keep it real. Yeah, no, no, real shit. That's just, that's just how it yeah. goes. But, like, now with, like, the NIL, the portal, like, how quick a motherfucker could hop. And, and and just look, it got to be something done because that portal shit crazy because it, most of these kids, one thing go wrong, they hit a wall, a motherfucker be like, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and we'll get yeah. into that. It's just, it, it, it's fucked up. But how... How how do you navigate like how how the landscape is now like with 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 nil and, and, and with the portal like you said you, they might go back to the crib and, and talk on the phone like look we 
we we trying to motherfucking get a hundred racks, two hundred racks, it, right. and this ain't right. it. You know right. what I'm saying? This ain't right. it. So so like, right. how, how are you like talking to the guys now? Because it got to be it got to be different mm -hmm. than it than it was. Yeah. Because once they they come in, like when me and Joe were playing, we locked in. We we probably gonna be yeah. here four years, three years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now a, a motherfucker have a bad game or they don't like something you said to them, they hopping out. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. for, for, for yeah. whatever reason, and, and it's teaching motherfuckers not good shit, you know what I mean, as they go forward. Yeah. But but how, how do you, like, navigate that shit now and talk to the players? I keep it real, E. Yeah. I keep it real. I keep it real. Right. You know, um, this is Syracuse. <laughs> um, we are one of the best programs in the country. So Facts. if this is not the place for you, and this is the, and the reality is this is a land of opportunity, it's just, you know, give, been passed down to college now, so everyone has options. Um mm -hmm. And again, you know, and even with the part of stuff, you know, you know, the thing, the thing that sometimes is hard is that everyone um, has those options and those conversations and every portal is different situations. You know, it is every portal exit or every person entering a portal has a story, whatever that story may be. And it's not always something that's like. Uh, it's, it's not always sometimes predicated on money. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's, you know, it's different, pre different things, um, roles or just whatever it may be. Obviously it is what it is, but I keep it real. E. You know, um, I try to do the best that we can. Um, but I think honesty and, 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 and being, being truthful, it eliminates a lot of distractions, <clears throat> you know, and we, and we recruit to that. You know? Like we recruit honest, you know, if a guy's, you know, saying, hey, you know, it becomes a, you know, negotiating game sometimes. Like, it's just, that's just not, you know, who Syracuse, that's yeah. not what it is. And it's a lot of good players out here. That's the reality. It's a lot of good players. And I believe in our coaching. I believe in our coaching staff. I believe in what we're going to do. We're going to be able to develop people. We're going to be able to get people better, you know. But the reality is, is that, you know, everyone has their, their issues or their decisions to be made after every year. You just know that now. So you just got to have honest conversations and be honest. <laughs> I you you just mentioned it. Honestly, a lot more oh, than sure. what people do. I do, I do, for and sure. I think every yeah. player, every family, you know, if you can take the finger and point it to yourself and hold yourself accountable and say, "Hey, what can I do better?" I think you can mm -hmm. make better decisions. You know, that's that's kind of the, nice. that's that's what we talk about. And at the end of the day, they can never say you lied. You feel me? Like, that's yeah. my biggest thing is you, you yeah. can never say, I, you can say whatever you want, but I've always been honest and been truthful and very transparent. But something that you mentioned was the development. I think that kids today, and especially parents, they all come in with an agenda. You feel me? And, and which, that's always been the case. There's got, you know, like, take, for example, a Dante Green. I don't think he had it in his mind that he was staying for more than one year. But at the same time. Even like, more now, though. That's, yeah, even more now. So now the parents are heavily involved and you mentioned the word development. I think that because you want that instant, you know, success, they don't want to wait to get better. They, they don't understand that, yeah, maybe I was a McDonald's or maybe I was a four-star, but I might not be ready to play at this level yet. Doesn't mean that you won't still end up a pro in two seasons or three, but the fact that they want that instant success is shit kills me, bro. Like, just take time and, and develop. And maybe that's because I was a product of that. I feel like I was pretty good coming in, realized, shit, college is a little different. I got to get better in certain areas. Every I got to get a little faster. I got to get a little rebound, better run, whatever it may be. And I feel like after four years, which E, we spoke about a couple episodes ago, getting better at something every year, not coming back the same player you were. You feel me? Like yeah. you got to get better every year, come back different, what, whatever. Maybe your footwork is better in year two, but something has to be different about you. And I think kids don't want to do that shit. Like they don't believe in, they want to be able to do what they want to do. Like, but that's not fucking reality, bro. There's a coach in place right. for a reason. Right. It's to teach right. you certain right. things. You got to right. be willing to receive that and, and apply it. But some kids, shit, ain't, it, it ain't all right. And that's because they have their people saying X, Y, Z. And it kind of fucks them up. You know, so yeah. I understand. You know what you're talking about, like, it's not even, the, you just said it right there, the last piece of it. It's adults. No question. It's adults. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's the world we live in. Um, our society is the same way. Um, not to say that I'm a, you know, this, it's just what it is. So to answer your question, 
Like, how do you prepare? It's just what we live in. So that's the reality. Um, you know, you know, this is everything is instant gratification. Everything is instant. Yep. Um, and everybody's critical, you know. Um, and so it's it's hard to, to stick to the process when, you know, everyone is critical. So think about this, fellas. Like, obviously, you guys are way younger than me. Um, you know, so social media is a part of your life, you know. It's not really a part. Like, I can go about my day and don't even pick up the phone. You know, like, yeah. and, you know, you know, like people, you know, it's, it's funny. Joe, you know what I'm talking about? Like, people can send me emojis, the emojis. It's like a whole paragraph. He said this. And I'm like, what? what? What's that? You're right. He's speaking you in emojis and shit. Yeah, you know, so, so, so I say all that to say, like, you know, like, it's hard for everyone to stick to that process because of, you know, um, everyone is, ah, uh, he's not, you know, like no one, you know, the, the perception is not patient. The society is not patient. You know, you know how many times, you know, um, you know, I got fired this year before the game even ended, you know, yeah. like, you know, it's like, what are you doing, man? Like, so again, that's where we are. So we got to be able to navigate that, you know, we got to be able and that's hard for, for people. I think we talked about this last time, e, like it's hard to stick to the process when, everything you do is being criticized and it's yeah. out there and it's on these platforms and it's what, so it's hard to stick to the process. But ultimately I always tell these guys, you got to block out the noise and mm -hmm. Hey man, you need to get better. And if you leave, you still have to get better. If you, like whatever that never changes, you have to get better. And so those are the conversations that we have. And, and look, when, for the, for the portal shit, I always, and me and Joe, we talked about this before. Like, first of all, the grass, is not always greener. I, I'll tell you that you, you look at the percentages and mm -hmm. like all the people who transferred out, it, it's probably more so that they, they didn't do as good as they, where they were first off. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and then you got to get comfortable with a whole new setting. You, you, you gotta, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not just on the court. It's off the court too. Like it, it's a lot of shit that goes into it, but people not even think about that, especially the kids. They just thinking of like, Oh, I could go here with a new situation. First of all, this motherfucker, wherever you go, they gonna call you, right? They gonna talk. Hey, how is this kid? Like, like, what is he? How how is he to deal with? It, it, you're not just gonna go into another motherfucker, like. And and I'll put like, and, and I don't. I, I'll just use Judah for example. Like, say, and, and look, this is hypothetical. I'm not thinking. You know, it's not reality. What I'm talking about, but like, say, if he goes somewhere else or whatever happens, he goes to another thing. Is he ever gonna get that amount of shots that he fucking got at Syracuse University? <laughs> I, I, I don't fucking think so. That man got to do whatever yeah. he want to do. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm right. just saying it. Right. And look, they, these kids got to do what, what's best for them. Like, and, and are you talking about yeah. their parents are involved? Everybody's involved. So I think at the end of the day, like the coaching staff and everyone involved wants what's the best for these kids. And, and like, and like you said, Red, you're you going to keep it real. You're going to be honest. That's the only thing that you could do. Look at all the shit that, sh that you going against. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that is come. I mean, the first thing when you recruiting a, a motherfucker in the back of his head, regardless they say it or not, they like, damn, how much this motherfucker got for me, man? No question. How much this motherfucker yeah, got no for like, so, how, so, so talk about like, like how, like how, how you deal with that type of shit? Because parents going in off top, like, yo, what's up? What, you, what, what, what yeah. the deal? What, what, what deals you got for me? Like, instead of like, yeah. hey, how can my, how can, what, what's my kid's role? Like, what, what can he come? Motherfucker, you ain't even scored a bucket yet. You asking, can you get 250,000? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how, like, how is yeah. that to deal with, man? I think you, I think one is a lot of, you have to, I think you got to figure out their priorities. Like anything, it's anything. Right. What's their yeah, priorities? Yeah. What's our priorities? And make sure they align because the one thing you can't do is waste time. You Facts. know, you can't waste time. Don't get that back. You know, so, Right, right. And again, um, obviously, you know, these 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 student athletes, you know, um, they deserve, you know, what they what they you know, they deserve to earn and which is great, because I think right now is as you've gone through this, you know, they they you know, you're putting retribution. Where my bread at? Right. They have earning <laughs> power younger now, you know, and they've been they've been yeah. able to really really make that transition into familyhood, adulthood, if they do what they're supposed to do, you know, financially in a better position than we all had to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> no doubt. Hell you yeah, know, shit. We, you know, we had to do so that overall in the in the in the athletic world should help be, help make people athletes 
transition better and have less horror stories, you know, of people, you know, doing different things or not having it. So, cause now you, you know, they're, they're being able to earn money earlier, but I think it's really about aligning yourself up, man. You, you, you know, so, and there's nothing wrong with it. everybody's priorities have to be aligned and, you know, you, you, you still want to be able to have something to offer because that's what the, the landscape is. And I, and we do, and we do. And I, and again, so I think we have a great uh, balance of all the things that you need to be successful here. And that's, those are the things. And if, and if those resonate with people eat, we'll get them. If it doesn't, then we won't. And now we got to go somewhere else. It's too many players out here. Yeah. I'll I tell you one thing. And it was, since we all being honest, I'm sick at that shit. I'm sick. What we ain't, I'm not in this motherfucking era right now. I'd have been. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I'm sick. I'd have had a million. I'd have had a million. <laughs> yeah, right. that, that 602 right, thing. All right, all right. Maybe. I, I, yeah. Shit, maybe. 18, I don't know. Maybe, but. 19, uh, you know, you got to, you know, you got to, you know, you got to go no, party guess, a little bit. You know, you do some stuff, man. You know, all, and take the bar would have been bought out. The bar would have been bought out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, oh, no. I'd have been selling the shit out those 60 t shirts. Joe? Yeah, big time. Of course, yeah, you got yeah. to. Which you on the table, the merch, all that. Oh, yeah, oh, I'd have had oh, a, yeah. the picture. The picture would have been motherfucking. Uh, I'd have had all type of shit on the back, man. Like, man. <laughs> hey, listen. We, hey, you know what's crazy is like, obviously, yes, that's that's that that. But like, that's what our student athletes are dealing with. They they dealing with that on top of trying to do all the stuff that we did. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like they they dealing, they got people sitting down presenting them with those opportunities. You know. Um, and they got to deal with that. And then they got to come and perform and then they got to, you know, go to class and then they, whatever. Yeah. But we just had to perform and go to class and then have some fun. That's it. And nobody really kind of, you know, but yeah. again, so I give these, these, these athletes a lot of credit. Yeah. I know, I know yeah. sometimes people are harder, but I give them a lot of credit, man. They tough, they tough, they tough in different ways. You know, they handle a lot more than what people, so I give these, you know, I got a lot of respect for our student athletes in today's, in today's landscape. I do. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's hard, man. Yeah. You think about, I mean, Joe, think, think about this. I was like, all right, I signed a deal for whatever, 100K, 150K with, uh, with uh, I don't know, it's a car dealership or whoever it is. And then, you know, I go out and, and play shitty as fuck. I might need that fucking car back. <laughs> they don't do that yet. And nah, that's, yeah, but, that's, but, but like, that's Europe. <laughs> you know what I mean? They You're not, not getting that. that. You're not getting that motherfucker hey, check. Hey, hey, you want the practice the what? next day. It's another, it's another American there. you like, man. Who are you there for? Oh, damn. Same position now. Nah, what's going on, yo? Contract <laughs> don't mean <laughs> shit. Contract don't nah, mean shit over shit. They, they move they, differently they, over there. Man, I done seen some you. things happen. Insane. Woo. But, nah, it, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a hell of a landscape now, bro. Um. So with, with everything on the topic of, you know, portals and all that, obviously we had a couple student athletes enter and all that stuff. Um, how, how do you not to say navigate that? Cause I know how you navigate it, but <clears throat> how do you go, how do you move going forward in the sense where, okay, now do you go into the port? Are you going into the portal? Is it like a couple guys going to the portal? Is that the first look every se season? Okay. I need to get two guys out the portal right away. Cause I know every year going in, I might lose one or two to the portal. Right. So is that the right. first move after every, at the end of the season, once you can, you know, breathe and think, is it, okay, let me go see what's in the portal. Is that how it goes as a coach and staff or as a coach now? Is that the first look? I, I think you're always trying to improve. You know, again, these players are trying to improve their whatever, as a, as a program, yep. we have to do the same. You know, we have to look to try to improve and get better where we may have fallen short at some issues that we may need to address um, and then after that, I think obviously you you see who you're losing. You look, you see mm -hmm. what your roster is. You see who you have coming back, and then now you try to you know build that team up again. You know with the with your core group of guys um, and being able to make sure. And that's where the you know making sure it's the right fit. You know making sure you're bringing the yeah. right you know check the character. Do they check this? Do you know checking right, all these right. boxes? Do you match? with your players that you have right now, you know, because you are ultimately, you know, as, as a coaching staff, you want all your players to enjoy this experience and have success. And we want to win and we want the community yeah. win. We, you know, we know how big this is. So everything is like, Hey man, like how do we put this puzzle together again? You know, sometimes you got to put a whole new puzzle together. Some teams do it. 
Um, and then sometimes you just got to add pieces around that center, the centerpiece of it. And that's kind of, you know, how you look at it. So I think you wait. Yeah, obviously, you know, you know your strengths and you know your weaknesses. So you know what you need to address going in to the, to the offseason. Um, so now you're looking at how can you address those. And like you said, you know you're going to lose some people. You know, so it yeah. depends on who you lose, how you want to address that. <clears throat> Quick question what, for what, you, what? right? I know oh, uh, my fault. Right. No, so, yeah, so I know, uh, you know, you're, you're coaching now and you went, you played it. We all played at the Qs, you know what I'm saying? Now you came back as an assistant. Now you being a head coach. Do you feel, obviously I know that this is, you know, every head coach, every coach in general is this how they make a living. You know, your livelihood is at stake year in, year out. But being in that seat as a former player, now being a coach, do you think that, do, does that make you want to win that much more? Just being that you were a part of this community as a player, now you're back here as a coach. I mean, anybody, I'm sure if you go, you know, right. hey, you know, if it was motherfucker, whoever, Joe Schmo that came to coach at Syracuse, yes, he wants to win. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it's, it's his job. But I feel like because you played here, you have a, a, obviously a lot more love for the place where you're coaching, the place where you played. Uh, it, does that play into how you approach every day, every practice? And I know as a coach, we can't do shit but prepare these kids the best way we can to 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 perform, and you give them the keys to success, and hopefully they could go out there and, and apply those things. But does playing at Q's give you that extra? I don't know what the fuck the, the oomph. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day out just to go yeah, yeah. and go yeah. and succeed. Yeah, I think I, I know exactly what you mean. And the answer is yes, yes. You know, um, and, and in particular, me. Think about this. I've been I played here for four years. Yeah. Um, I've coached here for 15. So I spent 20 years of my life in this community. I've raised my family nice. in this community. You know, um, so yeah, I'm not, you know, you saying people get motivated, obviously, to win and do the good job. Like, my motivation is that, you know, I I, I take on, the, you know, like, this is my alma mater. I want to win exactly. for my alma mater. Exactly. I want to mm -hmm. win so that my community I, it, is happy. My family, like yeah. we love, we breed cues. And I think, you know, that's why those, that's why you start to see, I think more of those hires in college, um, that, that, that you can get people that obviously, you know, like I'm not a substitute teacher. I'm here. I'm from here. <laughs> this is the hardest. I'm from the community. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. so again, like, Hey man, like, you know, and I think that helps us in recruiting because a lot of people don't have that. You know, they mm -hmm. have that. They're doing a job, you know, and they exactly. want to be really good in their job. You know, me, this is like I represent my school, my community. You know, Syracuse is where I'm from, my hometown. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. 315, you know, that yeah. like, again, when we start talking, when people are, when we start even talking like we have doubt, or we whatever, I get upset because we belong on the biggest stage with anybody and everybody. Facts. You know, so um, through where, oh, it must be tough to live up here. No, it ain't. It's great to live up here. It's the best place in a, you know, like, it's a real community. You know, it's a mm -hmm. real, like, you don't That's have real that community. Yeah. You don't have all that. We don't have all that nonsense going around because this is a community, you know? So Facts. I'm not here just buying my time. I live here. You know, I'm from here. Yes, sir. So, yeah, you know, you know, like, this is not about winning. This is, I, I want to win because of my community mm -hmm. and because of mm -hmm. school. I want you to be able to go to work, Jojo, throw your hat on, throw E, I want you to be able to walk E, you know. We see each other in the community, track meets and stuff like that, E, you know, we want to be, no, no. you know, you want to <laughs> have those conversations, you know, like, that's what it's about, you know. That pride, yeah. baby. That orange pride, man, I'm telling you. That's just yeah. real. Ray, you told us. I'll, I'll, we'll get back into recruiting a little bit because um, it is fucking it, recruiting now. It's just fucking totally, yeah, yeah. totally fucking different. But how, so, what's the balance like though? Because I feel like a lot of these high school kids are getting slighted because yeah, it, 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 because of the portal. Because now, it, and and it's just the real. Like I, I remember when I was coaching at Detroit Mercy with Mike Davis. These motherfuckers was like, man, we ain't recruiting no high school motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. like they, they want the motherfuckers who are ready because a lot of these high school kids, especially at the lower level, like they not they not ready to come in and play. That's just that's just the reality of it. you get you a motherfucker who you know been one two years in college, they that much more prepared. So so like, what's the balance 
that you yeah, have, like yeah. re- the high school recruiting in, 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 in the portal, because you get a guy like, uh, you know, Elijah Moore coming in, and, you know, a uh, uh, Donnie Freeman, who's a McDonald's American. That motherfucker look like he ready to go. You know what I'm saying? But but a lot of times, that's not the case for most of these kids in high school. You know what I mean? So yeah. what's the balance for you? Portal, high school. How, how y'all been going about that? You know, I, I, I still love, I love the balance. I love to have high school, but I also like to be a little bit uh, older. Um, and I oh, think when you go to you know, high school, I think you know, the one thing for us is that you got to commit. When you recruit a high school guy, you got to commit to having that program and being willing to play him no matter what. So you got to make sure that evaluation is right. You got to make sure he's going to be able to play. And that was about, you know, putting the right pieces around freshmen to play, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, again, they have to be a part of your program. So to answer that, E, like I got I, – I love – High school, I still think is I think the talent and the level of, like you just got to get the right ones. You just can't have six or seven of them, you know, unless you're Kentucky. You know what I mean? Or unless you're do, you can do that, you know. But right. you know, we won't get six or seven of those guys. So we got to find the ones that are ready to go, um, ready to contribute, um, and then surround them with some other guys, some older guys. So you know, because you they're still be freshmen. Freshman. Yeah, exactly. So you gotta have a balance. I like a balance. I like a balance. I like to have, you know, two or three talented freshmen and then obviously, you know, you retain some guys and then you know you bring a couple of guys in. But you gotta have a balance. You look at all these teams right now, man, you know, these guys are old. These teams balance. are old as playing yeah, yeah. right now. You know, and they and they sprinkle in a couple of what? Talented freshmen. Yeah. You know, I think Duke and Duke is probably the youngest team in the Sweet Sixteen right now. You know, yeah, Clemson old as shit. Everybody, yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody's old. Oh, you can't do that. I, I, I don't know who it was I seen talking about, and they mentioned Kentucky losing to Oakland. Just the fact that yes, they'll all be better pros than probably anybody that, that goes pro yeah. from Oakland. But that, right. that that age difference. You coming as a talented freshman, it's hard to win with just guys who are ultra talented. You need some type chemistry, and people were trying to mm-hmm. scrutinize Coach Cal, but I mean that's what he does. If you go to Kentucky, you probably want to do the one and done thing. He's not. You're not going to be there four years, rarely. You know what I mean? Right, right. They don't have enough older guys like you mentioned just to be able to take the weight off of some of these freshmen. They don't know. They've never been in this environment before. Now you, ex- now I'm in the first round. I'm expected to win. It's all type of shit going on. So definitely, I get you that. You got to be special. You got to be special. Oh, yeah, no question. Anthony Davis you gotta, type shit. You got to be, you got to be Carmelo Anthony type shit, huh? Carmelo, uh, <laughs> G, yeah, yeah, but they had some older guys Generational. on there too. Generational. You know what I'm saying? They had some yeah. older guys. They had a good balance. They had a great yeah. balance. Oh, great yeah, yeah, you had a balance, right? Yep. You know, you, when balance. I listen to those guys talk about that team all the time, like if you sit and talk with any of those guys, obviously Melo, um, G Mac, they all got the headlines yeah. deservedly so. But if you talk to those guys, you know who they talk about? Quack. Facts. Quack Wayne. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say Quack that. Wayne, they talk about Craig. You know, they they talk about those other guys that you know, you know, sacrifice or. You know, those pieces that gave them that that leadership because they they were the talented ones. They knew that. And that's what made those mm-hmm. guys, you know, again, like, you know, those guys, they, you know, you listen to those guys talk, they obviously they did their part. Don't make no mistake about it. But when you talk to those guys, they always talk about Josh Pace. You know, they talk about those guys. Facts. You know, they, they talk about how, how important those guys were. You know, Hakeem, you know, I don't want to leave anyone out. But, you know, but like yeah. that's what they talk about. Oh, you know, yeah. but, but, but you got to have that balance. And they had it. They had They had the recipe. Guys who are for playing, pivoting roles, away. playing roles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to play a role. Pivoting away a little bit from Q's basketball. I just want to <laughs> ask you, Trey, you know what I'm saying? I followed a couple games this year. Yeah. How do you feel about just his – well, I haven't gotten a chance to speak to him yet about his first year, not, not that it's just finished, but I'm sure you have. But how did you feel as a, as a father just – watching him grow and, and go through the trials and tribulations of a freshman in college and how much were you able to help him if he ever did have you know at the end of the day kids sometimes too cool you know my son's six he don't talk to me about nothing he talked to his mom about everything. <laughs> you know what i mean so like so <laughs> but i <laughs> but how was that just talking to him after yeah. uh, just after seeing his first year you know what um i was i was super proud of him because i think um he went in I'm um, excited. And obviously I think he has an advantage because he's been around and he's grew up in it. So, you know, he had a chance to watch 100%. you guys who are working. He's had a, you know, he, he's buddy, you know, he's had great role models to see the yeah. work that you need to put in to be successful. Right. So, you know, I know he came in with no really expectations 
And he started for the first nine, ten games of the season. So I was mm-hmm. super proud of that. You know, and then he went through his, you know, rough patch. And then he had to come off the bench. Yeah. And then he reinvented himself. And then he worked his way back into the starting lineup towards the mm-hmm. end of the season. So, um, and again, through those the, through those um, peaks and valleys, like, um, you know, I felt bad because I'm in the business. <clears throat> I'm a coach. And where, yeah. like, some of his other, you know, players that go through it, you know, they parents. So they give them mm-hmm. that different type of advice and that different type of love. And I'm right, giving exactly. him that, like, hey, I'm giving him, like, listen, this is what you got to do, you know. Yes, yeah. I understand yeah. you're not wrong to feel that way, but, you know, this is, like, you got to put those feelings away now and, and kind of do mm-hmm. this. And, you know, so I, it was good to try to help him through those. But, you know, um, I was excited. I was proud of him. You know, I'm like, proud to see him, and I was excited to see him grow um, and go through his ups and downs, you know, yeah. and and, uh, and be, be able to respond, be able to respond. And he did, man. Like, and it was times, you know, he wanted to, you know how it is, fellas. Like, you get mad. Oh, for sure. Nah, I can't yeah, do this. Yeah. Nah, man. <laughs> listen, listen, I always tell people, I always tell our players, and they know this, namely, players want to win, but they have a but. If mm-hmm. I play well, if I whatever. Coaches, we just want to win. Right. Yeah. We don't care how we do it. We just want to win. So, you know, I gave him some of those, and he, obviously he'd be like, man, you know, he's mad. Like, you know, so and so other. You know, they don't you know, like, yeah, man. Like, so, you know, so, but I was, I was proud of him, Joe. It was, it was good, man. It was, it was fun, and, and uh, I had a chance to see him grow from afar. It was good. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I feel I feel the same way. It's extremely happy for him. I, I let him know every time I get a chance just to you know, just because I'm I you see remember, him, right? You know, I remember, you know what I mean? So I'm just I'm happy. I'm really I'm proud of him, man, for real. Well, yeah. has there been a time though, uh, Red, where he, he, you know, he he's been dealing with like nil stuff. So 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 now, like as a parent, like okay, so you you oh, dealing yeah. with those parents now. So now you kind of like all right, let me take my coaching hat off and become a parent, like. Yeah. Hold on now. Let me see, you know, let, let's see what the contract yeah. like and do all that. Like, has, yeah. has he been dealing with that? Well, he, yeah, he deals with it. You know, obviously, you know, players are players and, you know, everyone's mm-hmm. talking, or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, it doesn't consume him as much. But, you know, we've had those conversations. Hey, man, like, and I always say the better you play, you know, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a component yeah. of playing component of building your stuff up but obviously the school and they do a decent job of you know trying to you know um create some opportunities for them so they have a couple little little things but little deals here and there and i always tell them whenever you whatever you do that's little do it to the best of your ability because you never know like how that's going to carry and impact someone else exactly you know so that's why guys when you do anything visually or you show up to your to your thing and if you crush it now that person said, man, I love, I love the way Trey, you know, came in. His energy was great. Mm-hmm. He's talking to someone else. You may create some other, you know, more no opportunities. Question. So a ripple whole, effect. Thing, you know, as far as that NIL, NIL component of it, that's what I always tell our parents. And I got, it's two things to it. Yeah, it's some things that kind of come with it because of our community. But you can create things too. You know, you can create some some um, some different opportunities as well. But yeah, sure enough, man, he talks about it. You know, he's he's no different than anything. I told I told a coach. Yeah. I said my my son because he's he's my son. He's no different than player six, seven, eight, or one, two, nice. three in your team. My son. And I need he that bread too. And he wants that bread too. Man. <laughs> and I, I need that in my pocket. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Hold on, cause, cause, cause now you ain't coming to me, Dad. Look, I need. Nah, hold on. That and I do. I seen that seventy thousand. You straight? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what's up. The, you know, yeah, DC man. Shout out DC. You out there doing? Oh, yeah. doing all right. it, it, it get expensive in DC. It get it get a little oh, expensive man. in DC. So oh, shit, man. that NIL money go a long way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Make sure you yeah. use that, man. Stop hey, trying man, to save it. Quick. I want. <laughs> I just want to touch on because uh, so with, with Quadir, I, I mean we, right. I, I seen he was transferring, but then his name's not in the portal. So like, is there a chance he coming back? Like, what's what's going on with that situation? No, I mean I think um you know I think it's always a process to it too. Obviously, you know you 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 announce your intentions, but you know it's some steps that you you have to make. Um, I'm not okay. sure he's made his way over there yet, but um, 
you know, I think, you know, um, you know, after we've talked, I think, um, you know, for Q, you know, I think he's, and, you know, we both, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's mutual, man. Like he's, it's good. You know, he's going to go and, you know, explore that. And again, he's, he's done a lot, you know, um, he's a talented player. Um, you know, he's going to continually get better and grow. And I think, you know, I just wish him the best. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, be coming real, back, real. man. Shit, he. I, I, look, real, sorry, Joe. I, I just think for real, like, and and me and Joe were talking about this rant, and you ain't got to get into it too too crazy. It's it's just me speaking, but like, for, for if if you gonna transfer, like, and this goes for, I'm just talking about in general with, with everybody. Like, I get if you got a, a a bad season or if you're not playing and you you feel like you're not you know uh, gonna get in the role or or, or the rotation, whatever it is. All right, go ahead and. And, and transfer out. I get that. Or if you killing, now you dominate. Now you like, all right, damn, I'm, this NIL bread is going to come at me. You know what I'm saying? So then you, mm-hmm. then I get those two situations. But like, if you had a year where, man, you solid, you, you, you building on some shit and you can get better in the, div- and with the team that you at, I just don't, I just don't understand the move. And, and maybe, maybe, and I'm not in it all the way. So it might be some, some right. other shit going on. But I just think for anyone in general, like those are the two, reasons i would be be transferring you know family stuff i'm not getting in the rotation or if i'm just killing and not then i could go somewhere else and get more nil money but in in between there <clears throat> uh, man like i said the grass ain't yeah, no develop, real, get better come on Buy man in, it, it, lock in. Uh, yeah yeah the, the one thing i'll say is you know um obviously you know um and i'm not talking about anything but in particular i always say the portal you know everybody has a story um, and it's not always sometimes, you know, it's different, it's different stories to it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's different, it's different ways to see it, you know, but all it is, is the right of freedom on both ends. Everyone has an opportunity, you know, um, to, you know, the freedom part is, is big now, you know, like, yeah. a, you know, like opportunities. And when you have opportunities, you know, like anything, it's just like, you know, you know how when you went to, you used to go shopping, you know, you go in that first store, your mother tell you, wait, go look around first, you know, like. <laughs> but, you know, and, I, I'm, and I'm just talking on the trans report. I'm not talking about anybody of our situation. I'm just saying it's a lot, it's different opportunities. Um, and and everybody has a story in the portal. That's all I'm saying. So for all the yeah. people that's watching, it is no secret messages, it's none of that, you know. Everybody has a right to do what they need to do. Um, and that's just what it is. Again, I'm not talking about our situation here. So I just want to be yeah. clear with that. You know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to be clear that. with that. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, you know, this is us talking about the generalities of the transfer portal. 100%. Yep. Yep. 100%. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of times, we, we yeah. got, oh, go ahead, E, my fault. I was just saying real quick, a lot of times, too many options is too, shit, that fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, I, get it. I mean, look. You know how it is. You got you got three, four contracts looking at looking in your face. You're like, man, which one is that? Yeah, exactly. You, know, you, you know, got you weigh the pros know. and cons, and you got to do your due oh, diligence yeah. and, and oh, make yeah. sure that it's straight. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the one thing, the one thing I like, and I know, the one thing before we get off is, you know, when you talk about nil in the new landscape, um, the one thing I love, and again, it's through whatever lens. Some people have a lens of. They're not on board with it. Some people have a lens of this is great. Um, I love the opportunity because, again, um, you know, you you put money into young people's hands um, and they get a chance to go through and build in their earning years now. You know, so now um, they get a chance to be able to start their families. They get a chance to be able to, you know, on a, in, a, in a better situation, a better footing. Um, but what I really love about it is that, Obviously, we have the, a great community and a great fan base, right? All over, yeah, our nation, all over. Now they get a chance to impact it. Yeah. Not only, not only by supporting us, but they get a chance to impact it. That's what I yeah. love about this whole thing of NIL. And I think sometimes everyone gets screwed up. Oh, you know, they got to pay. You know, they can't donate ten thousand dollars. It's not even about that. About I mean, I think. You know, just imagine ten dollars, twenty dollars. Everybody that supports it, right? That's it. Think about just it. Check that stadium Orange out. Nation. Check the dome out. Come yeah, on. like yeah. just think about Orange Nation. Like ten dollars. Like 
that's that's all it takes. You know, yeah. if we got all of our people donating ten dollars, think about it. You can support all your programs for maybe fifty dollars if everybody in Orange Nation is supporting it. Mm-hmm. So now all those numbers add up. I'm not a mathematician, but I know. You know, with $50, dollars they might be able to pay me for four years of, of duties, of service. You, you know, so, you know, and again, so that's what I love because now they become not only do they, they can, they can make an impact. And I love yes. that. And I love the fact because we got a passionate fan base. Now, not only can you, you know, make, make your, uh, you know, your comments and stuff like that. Like now you can be a part of the team and make an impact. Yep. So I think that's yep. the one thing, you know, that I love about this whole thing about NIL. And I will, and I always say this, any chance I get, man, Armage United, you know, $10, $5, That's $10. It. We get everybody doing that. Hey, man, we can all have fun through the winter time. You know what I mean? No question. <laughs> hey, 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 tell them, Red, real quick. Tell them, Red, where, before you ask them, Joe, tell them, shit, where can they go? You know what I mean? To donate. Like, what, 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 what's the Armage site? United, you know what I mean? Yeah, Ar- armageunited.com. You know, www.armageunited.com. Again, you know, it's not I'm going to go ahead and donate $10 my damn self today, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, (laughs) hey, that's all it is, man. And we get everybody doing that, man. We can all, we can all, you know, get back to, you see this sign behind me? That's standard. That's what we work into. That's exactly what I want to ask you, man. You say, I see that, I seen it and I said, you know what? That's fire. I don't know where you're sitting at right now, but that's fire. Orange standard. And, Oh, my fault, big dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you know. Yeah. Hey, hey, Chris, you be, hey, hey, Chris, you know you've been here a couple of times just on the other side. You too, E. Yep, 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 yeah, don't yep, 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 that's on the other side, facts. But so if you, if just maybe even three words of what the orange standard, I know there's probably more, but what is oh, the yeah. orange standard? If we were to be able to break it down into just a couple words or whatever, even if it's a sentence, what is the orange standard? What are we looking for? Winning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Determination. Ah. Championship. (sighs) Say less. That's it. Yeah, you ain't got to say nothing. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's that's it. Orange standard. Orange standard. And, and, and we so all part of it, man. It, it, it yep. means more to us. It means more to us, I think, yep. than people really understand because yep. we, 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 like, we, I don't give a fuck. You played in 1980 or you played in 2000. We, we all came up fr- from the same guy. You know, we all in the mm-hmm. same family. We all a part of it. We, we, we want to see each other succeed. So uh, it, it means a lot. And, and Red, we uh, we really appreciate you coming on. I know you're busy as shit, man, with everything going on. But we appreciate, appreciate you. you taking the hour yes, or coming on and, and chopping it up with us and, and uh, you know, just kind of letting <laughs> us know what's going on, man. Definitely appreciate you. And never, 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 too busy, yeah. never too busy. Never too busy. You know, like I said, my dream is um, we're going to play. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put one of those banners up and I want everybody there. You know, that's the, yeah. that's the goal. That's the dream. You know, um, to put that banner back up, you know, add to what coach has done already, man. And I won't stop. Yeah. And, I, and I mean that. I won't stop. I know I got a smile. I know I got a nice little tone to my voice. But but trust me, everyone out there, like, I, I, I'm every night, every day, how can we get mm-hmm. back to what we need to get back to? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what So thanks yeah. again, fellas, man. I appreciate, no, I appreciate it, man. you. Proud of you. No, no doubt, Red. Keep it up. Great work. All Absolutely, right, guys. man. We'll have yes, you on sir. soon again, man. Appreciate you, Red. Yep. No doubt. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Yep. Hey, Joe, man. Shoo, chopped it up for the whole show. The man, last show. Hey, listen. If, if if y'all can't get with that last show, this is the last show of the season I get. The last show of the season. Let's do this. Maybe. We don't know. We, I, hey, I've heard. God damn what you got. Some bits falling off your screen. Yeah, yeah. Those, those, I don't know if it was bits or some, some confetti, but those motherfuckers better be some bits. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we could get this show to go throughout the summer. And, and, and I don't know, this is not me saying anything to production or to nobody. I'm just saying what I would love is for us to still be able to sit down and talk about the progression of the season, get some, maybe some recruits on in the summertime and see how their summer start is going, all types of guests. We got to get back to, to having 
some 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 alumni coming on here and you know chopping it up with them. I still need Jason Hart, still need Dion, still need a, a whole, still need DC. We it's a Billy O. We still have a whole list of guys that we need to get to. Obviously, season four, worst case scenario. But if we could keep this thing going into season four, let's get it. And, and, and first, it, before we get off, man, I just want to say that we need we need some bits too. Shit, QC United, yeah. You guys. yeah. It, it, this this our QC United, motherfucker. Shit, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but for Need real, we, we appreciate we appreciate y'all, man, tuning in every Wednesday. I, 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 it, it, this was like the best season yet. I mean, all the other ones were great, but it, it, I just felt like you know this was the best season yet, and we're gonna keep getting better um, going forward into to, to season four. So we appreciate y'all tuning in, and, and and my brother Chris Joe, come on, you already know it's a pleasure come every on, time. Man. We hop Come on, on dog. Yes, man, sir. We are. Always appreciate you. Appreciate you. Until season three. Until next time, baby. <laughs> yeah.